Be seated. I'm sorry if you've done that, Brother Borders, but there was an emergency case right out there. was dying with cancer, and I just had to get to it. Just I know you'll excuse me for that. So, all right, I hated to be late. I'd been waiting for just a little bit and meeting some friends, and then I'd come into this case just brought in very, very bad, so I had to get to it right quick. I just don't know how to start this afternoon. I was thinking on the road over here, what could I say to a, an audience of people like this? This has been a red letter meeting to me, and I'm not saying that just because that I'm before you. I'm saying it because it comes from my heart. And I want each of these ministers to know that I deem this one of my greatest meetings that I've ever had. That's right. Because of your fine cooperation is the outstanding of it. I've seen times that when they were, I've had more audience, greater attendance, but I've never seen a meeting I ever had in my life as any sweeter fellowship than what I've had among you brethren. God bless you. I trust that your churches will grow and extend and until there will be no end to it. I pray that God will keep you in the ministry until He comes. This is my sincere prayer for you. I've, I've been even when I've had more ministers in cooperation, like sometimes in Africa, India, like that, when we'd have several hundred on the board. But never such a time as seemingly behind me. One heart, one cause. That's really wonderful. I appreciate this, brother. Now, certainly, anything that I could ever do for you, just remember, I'm your brother. The nights don't get too dark. The rain won't fall too hard. I'll do anything that I can to help you. Uh, Further this great gospel or do something for you. God ever be with you. I want to also say to my little brother here, Roy Borders, I've just known Brother Borders for a short time. I've always wanted to find someone who would set up meetings for me. Brother Roy seemed to hit just the spot. He's not a minister. He's a businessman. I've let him set up two or three meetings just to see what he would do. And this is the outcome. One a car. And usually if a minister comes to set up meetings for you... Well, there's always a minister has something or another. He's got a doctrine or, or something or another that, uh, that he wants to present. And he get amongst a bunch of ministers and he presents a doctrine. Then, then you're in trouble. See? So it's better for a man, not a minister. By the way, coming in, someone asked me, said, Brother Branham, are you Jesus only? You belong Jesus only? I said, absolutely no. And said, oh, somebody said you didn't believe in speaking in tongues. I said, they don't know me very well. That's all. <laughs> Certainly I do. Now, and Brother Borders is a, certainly a Christian gentleman, done a real good job, and I certainly thank Brother Borders for my year. He's had a lot of sorrow, a lot of trouble, but he is, he's done a good job. God bless Brother Borders, is my sincere prayer. Brother Wagner, I think he's kind of a chairman, I believe. He's one I've been meeting always of the committee. A wonderful job, just like he did the other time. Fine. He invited me out home to be with him, set in his home. I sure wanted to do that so bad I could just almost feel it. I had to turn it down because I, I thought maybe with this wonderful fellowship, I'd like to come to each one of your homes. I'd like to see each one of you. And I, I respected your feelings. And I'm sure Brother Wagner understood just how it was to see and I, if I go to Brother Wagner's, I want to go to each one of you like that. If I don't get to do this, Brother Wagner, someday on the other side, just on the other side, I want a thousand years of peace with each one of you. <laughs> so we'll just have a wonderful time over there. Brother Toy, he's certainly, he's just, I don't see how he does so many things at once, but he certainly can get so much done. I see him the other day at the businessman's breakfast. How he was taking a part of preacher, deacon, janitor, and whatever more come along. He, he was trying to do it all. He loves the Lord. I had the privilege of meeting his 
wife and seeing his lovely daughter and her husband sing. It certainly was inspiring. I just said to him a few moments ago, they don't need to be at home working on regular work. They ought to be out in the evangelistic field somewhere with great gifts like that. To each one is, I hope I don't leave no one out. The lady plays the piano, the singers, the choirs, and all that's been, I certainly appreciate it with all my heart. And the boys here, Gene and Leo, they wish to express their feelings to you also for the buying of the tapes and the books and the part that they have to tend to. I just met them at the door a few moments ago and I told them I would express their feelings to you people. They certainly appreciate everything that you've done towards helping them in the great move of God. And now, this comes from myself, my son, my wife, and my daughter-in-law, and all, many. Uh, somebody's been saying, who is Sister Branham? That's the most bashless girl I ever seen in all my life. Oh my. Brother Art Wilson, I'm sure all of you know him. I believe Brother no, Brother Judah Rose. One night said, We'll have Sister Brandon come up on the platform. And she like had a heart attack. She just she's real bashful. Honey, if you won't faint, would you just stand up a minute so somebody can see what a sweet girl I married? <laughs> My daughter-in-law, Billy's wife, Lois, would you stand up and say just a moment? That's Billy's wife. <laughs> Many of you have heard of Joseph, haven't you? The African people really sent him a little coat of several colors. <laughs> I saw him six years before he came when the doctor said we'd never have another baby. We could not have. Our children had to be Caesarean. My mother, my wife's people is... That way, they, their babies are all cesarean. And the Lord told me I was going to have this baby when the doctor said it could not be done. Said it just could not be done. I said, it'll be anyhow. And we waited four years after a vision come that I'd have a boy and I should call his name Joseph. And after that, there's another girl born. Everybody laughed at me and said, you meant Josephine. No, I meant Joseph as a boy. You perhaps take my place when I'm gone, if Jesus tarries. And four more years. Then the doctor was positive there'd never be another one. Four more years. Joseph arrived. Wonder, Mama, if you could hold him up just a minute. I want him to see why this boy is already the spirit of prophecy upon him. And he stand up just a little bit, Joseph. There he is. <laughs> All right. He's like his mother, bashful. Um, I'll tell you what happened. We was away. He's four years old now, but when he was three, we were away and he said, Daddy? And I said, Yes, honey. He said, David, that's the boy that was crippled and was healed, Mr. Wood's son that lives next door to us, said, I was seeing him have an wreck on a motorcycle. He doesn't even have a motorcycle. And it hurt his leg. He tore his clothes on the right side. I said, where was that at, honey? He said, down the lane from where we live. And three days later, a boy came through from Kentucky riding a motorcycle. And David went out the lane and hurt his right side and tore his clothes just like Joseph saw it. When I dedicated him to the Lord, the morning there was many little babies standing. They had mothers with them along the altar. When I picked up Joseph in my arms, not thinking of what I was saying... I said, Joseph, my son, thou art a prophet. That's my prayer anyhow. And I believe it will be. that God will take everything that he ever give me and double it times double and put on that boy. Then when I leave, that he'll take my place. Billy has been my chum. I raised him. His mother died when he was just 18 months old. And have been father and mother both to him. But he seems like he doesn't have a call to be a preacher. He's bashful, backward, and so forth. A whole lot like his mother, shy. But he's been a great help to me along in the meeting because I've trusted him. Amen. Take him out there and give him a responsible job. See, that prayer card job's a responsible job. Amen. Somebody get a hold of that and say, a man one time said, I'll give you $500 if you'll put my wife on the platform. 
what that would take place than what with the Holy Spirit. Billy knows is good enough to know to never try that. But you know I'd find it out as soon as he hit the platform, so the Lord would reveal this way. <laughs> You'd never do it. So then, we're all thankful to you. And then to the custodian, the gentleman that helps us at the gate there, and I think he's kind of a custodian here or something, or a guard at the gate. And to all the people that let us have this fine auditorium, I just can't say thanks to it enough. I certainly appreciate it. And all that's in every way and everything that's done. Now, they told me, Brother Borders, a while ago that they're taking the love offering for me. I do appreciate that. That with all my heart, I'll use it to the best of my knowledge for the kingdom of God. Now, it isn't what we keep here that counts as what we stand on. And I'm sure that God will credit that to your account in the kingdom that is to come. Now, I do not have a radio program. I do not have uh, anything uh, to sell. But if you'd ever need one of these handkerchiefs or something to be prayed over, write me at Jeffersonville, Indiana, Post Office Box 325. It'll be ministered personally and sent right back to you. And I believe in that ministry. And then if you ever wish to call me, Butler 21519. Gets me at Jeffersonville, Indiana. So, or if you can't think of that, just ask for me at Jeffersonville at call. Now, I don't do that to get your address because I have a hard time getting someone to answer letters for me and so forth. And now I'm not much, it's all right. I believe in these programs, everything that's going to help God, let it be. But, you know, I feel like this, that a member of a church... Their first obligation is for their tithe and offerings is to support their church. If you're members of these fine churches that's represented here, you support your church. That's your first duty to God. Bring your tithe and offerings into the storehouse. In the storehouse, you surely know what that is. It's where you get your food. So that's where you get your spiritual food. And your obligation is to your church and not to an evangelist like me. It's taken up somewhere along in the meetings when we have campaigns like this where you have a little laying aside to help support it. That takes care of me. Now, I thank you very much. And every time prayer clause or anything like that is absolutely free. There's nothing in it at all. That we don't. And our books and so forth, when we sell them, we have to buy them 40% less than what we uh, get for them. And then we... That's through there... You get a lot of damage on them, and you get freight charges besides that, and then you have to haul them out here and then sell them. Why, you couldn't, you couldn't break even with them if you had to. See? But we do it just because that it's to get the message to you, to try to get you to be helped yourself and then tell somebody else and pass it on to them. That's what these things are for, isn't it? Amen. Communism puts out their books and their literature free because they're a great regime. I'm just one person. Wish I could. Had the money to just say all books and everything free. I'd do it. But I can't do it. I have to have something to go back again and print some more or buy some more. The Lord bless you. And you'll pray for me, won't you? And when I'm overseas and in those dark places where witch doctors are standing on each hand, challenge you to everything that you say. Times are going hard. The hot winds of persecution is blowing. Can I put you on the, the list or you put me on your list and I can remember when I have to meet that challenge of witch doctors and devils and things out there on the field. I can say San Jose is praying for me. Will you, will you do that? Raise up your hand if you will. Say I'll be praying for you. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. I come among you. To be your brother and to bring help bring peace in Christ. Everything is good to you. You pray for me. If I've left out anyone, forgive me. I don't mean to. But a great hearty thanks. And God's blessings to each of you. We're to leave for home now right away. I've got about a three days meeting there in my little church. Teaching them the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues. Signs and wonders to follow the believers and so forth. Of the people that's around in there. I believe in all the spiritual gifts. 
I believe in all the Bible. I'm Pentecost from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, inside, outside, all around, through. I'm Pentecostal. Yes, sir. They say, you're a Baptist, you said. I'm a Pentecostal Baptist. I'm a Baptist that got the Pentecostal blessing. So I'm, I love the Lord Jesus. And I was preaching, met some friends from Arkansas uh, outside. And we were talking about Arkansas and at Little Rock one night. There had been an old Nazarene brother who was on crutches and he'd sold pencils on the street for years. And here he is out on the street the next day with these old crutches walking up and down the street just glorifying God. That night he was at the Robinson Memorial Auditorium. You people from around Little Rock knows where it's at. And, and he held up his hand and said, Just a minute, Brother Bram, I want to ask you something. I said, Yes, sir, what is it? And he said, You know, when I heard you preach, I was sure you was a Nazarene, because that's what he was. He said, I was sure you was a Nazarene, because you preached just like a Nazarene. And said, Then I heard you say... You was a member at that time of the Baptist church and said, all your congregation there is Pentecostal. So I don't get that. I said, well, that's easy. I'm a Pentecostal Nazarene uh, Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it is. The whole thing is this. We're one in Christ Jesus, Amen. bound by the bonds of his love. Let us pray now for we... Open the word. We don't want to keep you so long. Now it will be late for your church service tonight. But let us ask God now to come in and bless us the exceedingly abundantly. How many has a request? Now raise your hands and say, Lord God, just remember me. I'm, I'm needy today. God be with you. Heavenly Father, as we once more appear, Approach thy holy presence. We don't only feel like taking off our shoes, but we take out our heart and just lay it before you, Father. We thank you for all that you have done in this great campaign. We realize, Lord, that greatness doesn't mean numbers. Greatness is your presence. For it was written concerning the coming Messiah that all the high places would be made low and the low places would be brought high. The leaves would clap their hands and the mountains would skip like little rams. And a person would think in their intellectual thinking of that great time that would be that fiery chariots would come from heaven bringing the Messiah. But how did it happen to an old, rugged-looking preacher coming out of the wilderness of Judea, not even dressed like a minister, with a piece of skin wrapped around him for a, a cloth, hair all over him and his beard over his face, preaching not in a church but on the banks of Jordan, crying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Down along the muddy banks come the footprints of a Galilean carpenter that walked into the water and God so recognized it and honored it until he opened the heavens and they saw the Holy Ghost descending like a dove upon him. That was great. What man calls great sometimes is foolishness in your sight, Lord. But what man calls foolish is great in your sight. Now, we're so glad that a great thing has happened in San Jose. Here sits ministers that sitting here. Some of them belong to the assemblies of God. Some of them belong to the church of God, independent, and the United Pentecostals and all different kinds. And here I am standing between them. Not belonging to any of the organization, but trying to stand in the breach, speaking for all. And we're one in you, one heart, one accord, one place. What a time for the Holy Ghost to renew something. Grant it, Lord. Be thou with us, Lord. Bless every denomination that's represented here. Grant it, Father. All these fine ministers 
May their churches grow and prosper, Lord. May sick be healed, blind see death here. Sinners be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. May there be a revival break out through this country here that will shake the whole West Coast. Grant it, Lord. May there be such zeal break out among my brethren that they just can't rest. One will spark to the other and each church will go forward as one great unit. Having fellowship one with another, breaking bread from house to house with singleness of heart. Grant it, Lord. Send that revival that we're waiting for. Bless the congregation as they wait this afternoon for their healing and many for their salvation. And help me, O God, as I read from thy sacred words. May the Holy Spirit take that which is yours, Lord, and bring it to our hearts. And then use me, Lord, to give a satisfying potion of thy word to each and every hungry heart. Hear me, I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask it. Amen. Someone just gave me a little note and said, Brother Baxter from Canada sends his love and greetings to you. And he's here in California now holding a meeting at Concord. God bless our brother Baxter. George Patterson, are you here? George Patterson, are you in the meeting? If you are, take my love. God bless you, brother Patterson. Take my love to brother Baxter. A fine man. And if any of you are around there, if you want to hear a sermon preached by a man that knows how to do it, go hear him if you're around there. Certainly is a wonderful preacher. We was together for many, many years. My love has never died for Brother Baxter. It never will. He's got a great church in Canada. He couldn't be with me anymore because of the demand of his church. I know what that is. Even my tabernacle today, of which my foundation. Now, the people who does send donations to this foundation has a government number comes back to you to give you tax resent from all that you send to this foundation. It's a, a non-profit foundation called Branham Tabernacle. And I know that them trustees put pressure on me. Let us build a great tabernacle. You remain here, let the people come to you. That sounds all right, but that isn't the will of God for me. There's some people that hasn't got money enough to come to me. I have to go to them. So, uh, I know what it is to have pressure put on you. And Brother Baxter had it put on him. So, he had to leave the campaign and go to his church. The Lord bless our Brother Baxter. Take him my love and regards personally for me, if you will, Brother. Now, let's turn in the scripture for the next about 20 minutes to some of the word. Which, it will never fail. And all the people that's here sick, needy for anything, just... Let yourself get right into the word I was going to preach this afternoon on as the eagle stirreth her nest. But I find out what the boys got that here and sold it among the people in a book farm. And then being just a little raspy in my throat, I took another text. I think now I've got everything mentioned that I was supposed to mention. All right, let's turn to John, St. John, the 14th chapter. For our scripture reading. And listen close as we read the first eight verses of John 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, 
Lord, we know not where thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know me and have seen me. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. In other words, satisfies. Now that's what I want to speak on this afternoon. It's been the cry of the human heart for the ever since we've been human beings. We would like to see God. And I want to take about four ways this afternoon to show you God. First, I want to take God in His universe. God in His Word. God in His Son. God in His people. And we could take it many other ways, but I'd like to speak from those four subjects. Four different ways that we're going to look upon to see if we can see God. Now, there's not a person here, but what would love to see him? Wouldn't you love to see God? I would like to see him. So if he is God, which we know he is, then why can't we see him? Job One time said that, the oldest book in the Bible said something like this. If I only knew where he lived, I'd go knock on his door. And I'd like to talk to him. And he got to talk to God. God told him to gird himself up like a man for he was going to talk to him. And he came down in a whirlwind and talked to Job. Reminds me of a... There near our place, we live on the Ohio River. And there was a little boy who went to a certain Sunday school, a Baptist Sunday school in our country. And he was very much enthused one day when he asked his mother, if this great person that's called God that we go to church to worship... If he is such a great person, wonder if you could let me see him. I'd like to see him. All the mother said to her little uh, junior, she said, Well, Sonny, you must ask your Sunday school teacher. Mother's not able to uh, provide that uh, answer. So at Sunday school, he spoke to his teacher and she said, I'm not able to provide that either, so you better ask the pastor. After the sermon, they asked the pastor. And the pastor said, no, Sonny. Said, no man can see God. Said, God is just like the air. And you cannot see him. And, of course, that didn't satisfy the little lad. And he used to chum with an old man down on the Ohio River. And he was an old typical fisherman graying in his beard. He's some 65, 70 years old. Batching, living in a little shanty boat. And I fished with him myself and we used to go up around the islands and fish. Set jumper lines. So this little lad was with him one day up the river and on the road Back there come up a storm and they had to rush quickly to the bank to land the little boat. Because the waves were so awful big and white capping until it would turn the little craft over. So after the storm was over and they came from behind the trees, they pushed the little boat off the bank and got out into the current of the river, which is about one mile across the Ohio River there. Started down the river, drifting along as the... Old fisherman was pulling the oars. 
While they were behind the tree, the old fisherman had told the little boy the story as he had asked him why he wasn't married and didn't have anyone to take care of him. And he said, oh, Sonny, there's someone who takes care of me. And the reason I'm not married, my wife is in heaven waiting for me. And he went on with the story, and as he got out into the current, they were going east with the little boat, or going west, rather, with the little boat, and the old fisherman facing back up the river towards the west. It was in the afternoon, and and the sun was setting, and after the rain come a rainbow. And oh, I think that's the most beautiful time. When the rain has washed all the dirt off the trees, and, and they look so pretty and green in their original colors, and all the flowers are pretty, and the atmosphere is low and brings the smell of the rose out. It's just a beautiful time after a rain. I think it somehow reminds me after revival. When the Holy Spirit is come in and washed all the dust out. And, and got us sweetened again before the Lord. Just to stand in the presence of like I am this afternoon. Just bathing here in the presence of the Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit taking all doubts and fears and things away from us. And we stand together. After a, a shower from heaven, it's filled our souls. And as the old fisherman started pulling his boat on, the little fella noticed that tears began to come down the old fisherman's face. And the little lad turned to see what he was looking at. And there was a rainbow across the sky. So the little fella sitting in the stern of the boat become enthused so he was holding on to the side of the braille and he raised up and run up into the stern of the boat and fell down the old fisherman's lap and he said I want to ask you something that my mother nor my Sunday school teacher or pastor can answer for me and the old fisherman stopped his oaring and said what is it lad he said, I noticed you looking at that rainbow. Said, they tell me that God put that up there. He said, that's true, my lad. He said, if God is so great, could anyone see him? And the old fisherman embraced the little boy to his bosom. He said, blessings on you, my little lad. Let me tell you something. All that I've seen for the past 50 years has been God. There was so much God on the inside till he could see him on the out. Now that's the only way you're ever going to be able to see God is get him on the inside of you. Let him look through your eyes and he will declare himself. Of course, God is in his universe. No one that's got his right mind could think of go down here at Los Angeles, Mount Palmer somewhere, and look at that, that pictures that they have taken, that great observatory where that 120 million years of light space you can see. Break that down into miles and see where you'd go. Why you'd run a row of nines around this city, still couldn't break it down. Into miles. But beyond that, there's still the solar systems. On beyond. And when a person looks at that, there's only one thing you can do is raise up your hands and how, saying, How great thou art, how great thou art. Each one perfectly turning till they can tell you the eclipse of the sun and the moon 20 years before it happens. To the minute. So perfectly timed by God. And then if you'll just notice in nature how that God will move among His universe. How that the world is tipped just a little bit to bring the hot and cold air together to make rain that waters your crops. How that God lives in His universe. Do you believe that? Sure He does. And some time ago I was talking to a person that on... 
the subject of God and it was down at, in Kentucky. And he said to me, he was an infidel. Mr. Wood and I have been squirrel hunting and we went over to ask if we could hunt on his place. And he said, oh, go ahead. He said, Brother Wood said, this is me and my, my pastor wants to hunt. He said, Wood, you don't mean you got so low down to you have to carry a preacher with you all the time. And he said, no, this is just my pastor. He said, he likes to hunt and said, I, and I'd been camped out for about two weeks with beard about a half inch long and, and dirty as I could be from sleeping on the ground the way we were camping. I was out resting and that's my way of resting because I found God in nature. That was my first Bible. It was God in his nature, in his universe. And he said, well, he said, it's all right, I guess, to associate with preachers. He said, but you know, I have my idea of those things. He said, I don't believe in any kind of religion. And there was another man sitting with him. And, and we went ahead talking about religion. They did for a while. And I just stood there eating an apple that I picked up off the ground. And he, this old man that was supposed to be the infidel, he said, I've often wondered I'd like to meet one preacher. And said that was the one was over here at Acton that time. He said, you know, the old sister over here on the hill, I can't call her name just now. I said, that man was standing there on the Methodist campgrounds, sponsored by the Methodist church. That's strange, but it happened. And was having a healing campaign. Now, you Methodists ought to believe that. John Wesley believed in it. Certainly he did. All the early reformers believed in divine healing. And he said, standing in the meeting that night, he spoke to the sister of this old woman over here that my wife and I and her husband, all we could do, she was so far gone with cancer, the doctors had given her up weeks before, and to get her on a bedpan that morning said she was in such a condition and said her sister attended that meeting and this preacher called this woman's name and told her to come lay a handkerchief on this woman with the cancer, her sister. And she did that night and the next morning she ham and eggs and cooked fried apple pies for breakfast and eat it. He said, I want to meet that preacher one day. I just stood there. <laughs> And I said, would you know the preacher? He said, no, I don't know him. And Brother Woods looked toward me and winked. And I said, do you mean to tell me you don't believe there's God? He said, I wouldn't believe it unless I could see it. I said, how old is that apple tree? Oh, he said, I set it out there about 40 years ago. I said, it's only early September. We've had no cold weather or nothing. Tell me, sir, what is it that speaks, what intelligence speaks to that tree and makes that sap go down into the roots and hide itself for the winter? Pour water on a stump and see if it'll do it. Or set a pan full on it. And see if it'll go down and hide itself in the ground, dodging the cold weather. If it didn't do that, the cold weather would kill the tree immediately. But some intelligence runs the sap down into the ground, out of that tree, and keeps it warm from the leaves that fell on the ground from the tree. And next spring, before even the weather begins to moderate, here comes the sap back up, bringing with it new life. Explain that to me. Tell me what does it. He said, I never thought of it before. I said, it's God in His universe. God times everything just right. He said, what's your name? I said, I'm Brother Branham. He said, that's the name name of the man was over there. I said, that's right. He said, with all them whiskers and covered with squirrel blood. I said, that's just the same. I'm the person. He said, how did you know that woman? I said, I didn't. How did you know she was going to be well? Said, she just passed down the road here. She and her husband a while ago walking. I said, I didn't know it. He said, did you heal her? I said, no, sir. God showed it. God healed her. It's His amazing grace. He was eating on an apple and he took a bite and he turned his head. He said, you can go ahead and squirrel hunt. I looked around and the tears was running down his cheeks. 
I put my arm around him. I said, Brother, you believe him, don't you? He nodded his head like that and turned around and walked out to the barnyard. Oh, God is in his universe. Some time ago, an infidel crossed the nation years ago, 40, 50, 60 years ago, getting converts. Oh, he was so smart with his intellectuals until modern preachers, intellectually speaking, could not hold nothing by him. And he made converts to infidelism. And one time his health gave down. He went up into Colorado near a ranch where I used to ranch and work. And he was taking a vacation back there. The man that I know was... And his father had cut the, the ways to to put his camp up. And one day he was walking back out and he stopped and he looked at the rocks. And he said, just where did you come from? How did you get there? And the winds begin to blow. He said, have I been wrong all the time? If there is a God, let him speak to me. There, that infidel, that preachers, or no one could, could withhold him or withstand him, rather, in the words of his wisdom. But the, they was afraid of him. But the Bible said, if they hold their peace, the rocks will immediately cry out. God has a way of doing things. The rocks cried out. There on his knees with his face. To the ground he surrendered his infidelic spirit over to God and become a sweet, humble Christian. If they hold their peace, nature will cry out. I, I'm a hunter. I, I love to hunt because there's where I found God first, was in the woods. When I was first wanted to serve him, I didn't know how to pray and we never went to church. Our people behind was, me was Catholic. They didn't, uh, Irish by nature, mother and father both, except my grandfather was Indian. And then they, uh, I didn't know how to pray and I want to get saved. And you know what I did first? I s- sat down and wrote God a letter and told him that I was sorry for what I'd done. And I was going to go out into the woods in a path where I used to have a real funny feeling when I go by these places. And I was going to tack it on the tree so he could read it when he passed by. Because I know he lived out there in the woods somewhere. I'd seen too many things happen. I knew that he lived somewhere. And I thought him being so free from sin, he'd be out into a place where it was clean, where people wasn't at. He could, I could find him there better than I could among... Uh, like places where people had contaminated. I learned my first Bible was from nature. I, you, you take these little ducks. They come from the south here and go out way up into Canada. And they make their nest up there in the slime. And they lay their eggs and the little ducks are born. And then that's in the spring. That year they raise up. All summer they're fed. And when winter time comes, the first time there comes a cold wind blowing across the mountains where frost is. Sweeps down across the prairie country where the lakes are or the foothills. And that first cold breeze blows across there with frost in it. Somewhere in that great big bunch of ducks on this pond is a little leader, a little drake. He'll run right out there in the middle of that pond, stick that little honker up in the air and honk four or five times. Every duck on the pond will come to him. He'll raise some air. He's never been off of that pond. He was born there that spring. He'll raise off of that pond and go just as straight to Louisiana as he can go to them rice fields. No compass at all. They call it instinct. I've often thought if God give enough gumption to a duck called instinct to lead him away from trouble what ought to do to a church that's born again full of the Holy Ghost what ought he to do he has no compass but he was born a leader ducks know their leader but the church don't the Holy Ghost is our leader he's our teacher he'll lead us into truth and to life Ducks know theirs, but it seems like sometimes we don't have as much intelligence as a duck. 
because he likes to keep and cater with what's given to him. But we try to figure out something different. That's the intellectual. You get out of God's great universe. I'll tell you what you can do. Some of you people from the cold countries, you watch that old sow go over from the north side of the hill and bring all them shucks and cobs around on the south side of the hill and make her bed. And that night you listen to the news. And the news will say, tomorrow will be fair weather. Don't you pay a bit of attention to what he says. That old sow knows more about the weather than he ever will know. That's exactly right. She went to the south side where it'll be warm. You go rabbit hunting and see those rabbits sitting back under the brush like this. Look out for cold weather. And if you see them get into a cornfield, it's fixing to rain. Just watch God. He moves. Oh, how wonderful He is. If you'll just open your eyes, you can see Him all around you. He's in His universe everywhere, moving. Watch Him in the sunset. Watch Him in the sunrise. Watch Him in the rainbow. Watch Him everywhere. You can see Him. He's no farther from you than your right arm is. God's in His universe. Some years ago, I was elk hunting up in Colorado where I usually hunt quite a bit. And up in the mountains there, it was early in the fall and the snow hadn't come deep enough to run the elk out of the high timber down into the valley. So Jeff and I, the rancher, we had, I've helped him ranch in there for years and still help him on the roundups. And we had rode up for hunting and he'd be gone for me for three or four days. He went back up on the west fork of the Troublesome River and I was hunting the east fork. And uh, if we got elk, we'd hang them up, know where to bring the pack horses, and we'd just on our saddle horse. And one day I was up high, got way away from my saddle horse, and up around the rim. And that late in the fall, it'll, first thing you know, the sun will be shining, then it'll rain, then it'll clear off, then it'll snow, and it's just changeable weather. And I was hunting high, it had been pretty dry, and I heard a crack of lightning and I looked coming across the mountains and the rain was coming so I just got in behind a tree and stood there a little while till the storm was over the winds blew and twisted and around and I stood in behind the trees till it was over after it was over I've been standing there thinking about God it's just been a few years ago I was holding these campaigns and I thought how great God is and how wonderful. I said, I must have been born for this place. Out in the woods, alone by myself. Away from peoples and crowds and the sick and the afflicted and everything. The telephones are ringing and the ambulances are coming. I thought, how sweet and peaceful. Lord, let me stay here. And I thought, I was born for this. This is my nature. Here's where I belong. Here's where you live. And I thought, well, if I don't get it in this one, I'll have it in the millennium. So I'll just wait for that time. And when the storm ceased, I kind of walked out and from behind the tree and way back over on the side of the mountain. I heard an old bull elk begin to, to bugle. And he was calling to the rest of the herd. It got scattered at the time of the storm. And he began to call to the mate. Then, as David said in the scriptures, when the deep calleth to the deep, if there's a deep calling, there's got to be a deep to respond to it somewhere. And then that nature began to rise up in me. Here's a place for me to stay. Oh, that's music. Way back over here, the old gray wolf howled and the mate answered it down in the bottom. Oh, my. That's when the deep really calls to the deep. You hear that wild call of the wolf. Some wild animal scream, the bird scream. To me, it's God. I can hear him amongst his beast and his animals. The wind of blowing, I happen to look back over here where the blowing cold enough to freeze the water on the evergreens. The sun come out over into the west this way and look like an eye looking through there, like God in the sunset. I noticed it caused a rainbow across the canyon. Now I begin to think, there he is in the rainbow. There he is over there in the calling in that elk. There he is over there in the wolf calling. Here he is uh, in the trees. I can hear his voice whispering. There he is there in the rainbow. For he was to look upon as jasper and sardine stone with a rainbow over his head. 
Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the end. He that was, which is, and shall come, the root and offspring of David. And with the rainbow, seven colors, perfection. God is perfected in sevens. And there he was also as rainbow as a covenant. Everywhere you look, you can see God if you just look into his nature. And while I got all filled up, I'm going to tell you something, then you know I'm, I'm a real Baptist. While I was looking at that, I got so full of the Holy Ghost until I set my gun against a tree and run around the tree just as hard as I could, kicking one foot up in the air and screaming to the top of my voice. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah just around, 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 around. I almost fell down there and stopped and jerked my hands up and down the air. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Just as hard as I could run. I couldn't think of nothing else to say. My heart was a bubbling over. What was it? The deep calling to the deep. I heard God out yonder and away and maybe she wouldn't hear him. But to me, he was in his universe calling back. I'm the God of creation. I made all things by my own hand. Yes, if somebody come in the woods, they thought they had a maniac in the woods. Round and round and round and round and round that tree, I went just having me a glorious time. I wasn't, anybody didn't care whether they heard or not, I was 50 miles, 30 miles anyhow from anybody as far as I knew. But around and around the tree, I went screaming because what? I was in a God's cathedral. I could see Him everywhere, the sun, the streaks coming through the woods. The rainbow yonder, the wolf hollering, the elk hollering. I could hear him in the winds. Oh my, he's everywhere. Way higher you can see where the snow peaked the mountains and shadowing off down into the evergreen. Oh, just look anywhere you'll see him. He's in his universe. You believe that? I stood there a little bit. And after a while I heard something going, chatter, 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 chatter. I thought, what's that? I looked around. There's an old blow down there where a, a farmer's storm had blowed some trees. And there was a little pine squirrel. I don't know where you know what they are or not. How many knows what a pine squirrel is? He's the noisiest little fellow that there is in the country. And he jumped up on an old tree stump there. And he was just acting like he's about to, he's going to tear me to pieces. Just chatter, chatter, chatter. Just jumping up and down, shaking all over as hard as he could. Oh, he's going to cut me up. Well, I thought, little fellow, there's no need of you getting all that excited. You're not going to do nothing. And I, did I, what did I scare you? I thought, well, you oughtn't to get scared about that. I was only praising the God that made both of us. There's no need of you getting all tore up. I was praising Him. So don't get all excited like that. Well, I was just praising God. You ought to know better than to holler at me like that. Don't interrupt me when I'm shouting like that because I'm having a good time. Leave me alone. See? And um, so I happened to notice the little fellow had cocked his little head sideways and looked down into that brush. Well, come to find out that he wasn't barking at me. Out of that brush through the storm, there had been a big eagle had been forced down. And he was mashed down into that, blowed down into that blowdown. And the big fellow, that's what the little pine squirrel was all excited about. And he jumped up on a limb. I thought, now, wait a minute here. There's something somewhere. Because I was worshiping God, running around around this tree here. And I see him in all these different elements of his and this nature. Now, why would he interrupt me for such a thing as that? Now, there's an old eagle. I admire the eagle. But I looked at him and I thought, well, what's, well, could I see God in him? Now, what would that be? I looked at him, his great, big, gray-looking eyes, and he stood there on that limb looking at me, and he looked at this squirrel, and then looked back to me. Then looked at the squirrel, look, I said, I guess you're looking us over. So I thought, do you know what? I could shoot you if I wanted to. And um, I looked at him, and my rifle was sitting up against the tree. I said, did you know I could shoot you if I wanted to? Never paid a bit of attention to it. Just sitting there, I thought, oh, that's what God wants me to see. Don't be afraid. That eagle's brave. He's not afraid of nothing. He wouldn't be ashamed to tell his boss he'd got healed by divine healing. He doesn't bother him. He's, a, he's strong. He wouldn't be afraid to testify if he'd received the Holy Ghost. If it was for him, he'd sure testify of it because he's brave. He's nothing to shame about him. Well, I thought, what's you so brave about? What makes you brave? 
I began to notice then, he kept feeling those wings. You know how they move their feathers back and forth, you know, pull their wings. I thought, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. God gave you two wings. And you know good and well that you could take them two big wings and get in that timber before I could even reach that rifle. He had confidence in what God gave him them wings. And he knew what them wings would do for him. How much different it is with the human being. God gave us the Holy Ghost and we still don't know what it'll do for us. That's right. It's unlimited what he'll do. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you get it and you shall have it. That eagle could trust his God-given wings. You know why? I think a lot of times the eagle had tried it out. <laughs> he knew what he was talking about and we got the Holy Ghost and haven't tried it out. That's just where it's at. See, if we let nature work in us like the, the animal does. Sure, he knows what to take hold of and what not. So he, he knew the distance from where I was standing from my rifle. He could be in that timber and I'd never see him. So he kept moving those big wings and I watched him. I said, oh boy, I never shoot you. I am so uh, proud of you. I like to see something that's got some spunk to it. Something that'll stand up when they know what they're doing. Don't you like to see that? That's the reason I like the Pentecostal church. Don't care what the world says. Call them holy rollers or everything else. They stand right up and shout just the same. Praise the Lord. Go right on. I like that. Certainly. Stand right up to it. No matter the difference who it is. Stay there and give your testimony. Give God praise. Now watch this old eagle as he moved around there, you know, a little bit. Now I happen to notice... He wasn't watching me so much. He was getting tired of listening to that squirrel cursing. <laughs> chatter, 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 chatter. Uh, he just looked over at him. After a while, he got annoyed at him. So the only thing he done was just give a great big jump like that and flopped his wings about twice, and he is beyond the timber. Then he never flopped one more time. He just set his wings. And every time the air would rise, he'd rise with it. And I stood there and looked at him. As every time the wind would rush in, he'd go a little higher. Never moved a feather. Just going up, 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 up until he become a little spot. I stood there and tears began to run down my cheeks. I said, oh God, this is a great place to be. Here's where I love to be. There you are in that eagle. See, he just made one big jump and he trusted his wings. He didn't flop from one meeting to another and go from one church to another. He just made one big flop, then set his wings in the power of God like the Holy Ghost and carried him away. Oh, no, no, no. He got away from this little old chipmunks of the earth here, earthbound. They ain't got no wings and don't know how to fly. Chatter, chatter. Days of miracles just passed. Don't just say it's the Holy Ghost. That's for another day passed by. Oh, just set your wings in the power of God. Let the Holy Ghost rise you above it. Whoa, all and on. You couldn't even hear no more chipmunk. Ground squirrel, whatever you want to call him. Got tired of that chatter, chatter. Oh, if the church one of these days will get tired of that. And they'll know how to set their wings and they'll take a walk with God and go home out of it. Days of miracles is past. Tell me when. Just come too late to tell us that, didn't they? Days of miracles is past. No such thing as the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues is just make believe. That's all they know about it. So the thing to do is just set your wings. He didn't flop now from place to place. I'll go over and see if this and I'll go over and see if that. He just knows how to set his wings. And that's all you have to know how to do about divine healing, about the Holy Ghost. It's just know how to set your faith in the power and promises of God. It'll pack you right on up. You just go right on up. Every time it blows in, you're going to rise higher and higher and higher and higher. Till you'll not be able to hear this. You're chatter, chatter, chatter. Days of miracles is past. Bunch of holy rollers. You'll not even pay attention. You'll be so far beyond them till you'll be out of hearing this and of them. Your soul will be lifted into a spot where, oh sure, God is in His universe. You believe that, don't you? Oh, we could spend hours just on that one thing. We've got to jump to another. You believe God's in His universe? Now, next, God is in His Word. Now, you look around the universe and you'll see God. Certainly you will. Now, God's in His universe. Now, God is in His Word. God keeps His Word. That's what makes the Bible real. That's what we can challenge any atheist, 
any unbeliever, any Mohammedan, any Buddha, any witch doctor, any spiritualist, anything else in the name of the Lord Jesus and make this word live. Because God is in His Word. I was discussing the other day with a, a certain denomination of church that believes that, that the church is the answer. Not the Word. They said they wrote the Bible. The Bible was, uh, the, it was a history of their church. And he said, God is in His church. I said, the Bible said God is in His Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's right. He was the Word of God. The spoken Word of God. And God is in His Word. Every promise God makes, He stands by His promise. The only thing we have to do is we take His Word into our heart and don't doubt it, but believe that God makes that Word, which is His self on the inside of you, go to work and bring to pass the very thing that He promised. Did He do it in Abraham? Why, Abraham, a man 65 years old or before he even, or 75 years old, before he received the promise, and he took that word into his heart and kept it there for 25 years, but it produced just exactly what the promise was. Is that right? God is in his word. We all know that. There's not one speck of the Bible contradicts itself. I've offered anybody anything they want. I'll preach the gospel and take up love offerings for a year and give it every bit to a man that can take the Word of God and disprove it by the Word of God to me. That's right. It's not there. I've had that challenge out for years and years. I'm still taking my own love offerings. (laughs) Because it's not there. You might be so scrupled up in your own intellectuals because the Bible is... Jesus thanked His Father for hiding it from the eyes of the wise and prudent and revealing it to babes such as would learn. See? It's the Word of God. The Word is like a seed. Now you take a seed. You people here on the West Coast, you're great agriculturists. Now you take your orange tree. Now you take your orange tree when you first get it. It's a seed. You put it in the ground. And that seed will produce an orange tree. Sure. Now, that's the way it is. Now, this orange tree, the only thing you do with that, when it's just about as high as your one inch high, I don't know how many bushels of oranges a tree would produce in its lifetime. Let's say, for instance, 500 bushels. Uh, That may be over or under. I do not know. But say 500 bushels. Did you know that every orange that will ever be in that tree is in it when it's just about one inch tall? Did you know that? Sure it is. Where it come from the seed. Now the only thing it is, it's just planted out, set out, and it has to draw. It sucks water from the earth to get nourishment. And it sucks water from the earth and it has to drink more than its potion. And every time, because it has to push out. And when it drinks in water, it pushes out limbs. Drinks in more water, pushes out leaves. Drinks in more water, pushes out blossoms. Drinks in more water, pushes out uh, oranges. It just keeps drinking and pushing out. But it has to drink. That's the way a believer is. He's set right in the middle of the Word of God. Amen. And if he has any need for anything, he just drinks and pushes out. Drinks and pushes out. When a man is filled with the Holy Ghost, everything that he'll ever use in his life's journey is in him right then. Yes, sir. The only thing we have to do is drink and drink and drink and drink and drink till we get it. We are planted in Christ Jesus. And to my interpretation of him, he is the inexhaustible fountain of life. That's exactly what I think he is. And when we are planted in Him, He's inexhaustible. We can draw from Him goodness, meekness, gentleness, patience, power, healing, and promise that He give because we're planted in the seed of His Word. And it will produce just exactly what God said it would produce. It's a seed. The Word God is in His Word. We believe that, don't we? All of us believe. You see God answering way years ago when He told them to go up Pentecost and receive the Holy Ghost. Years before that, Isaiah, he said, precept must be upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Hold fast to that what's good. Stammer lips and other tongues while I speak to this people. And this is the rest. See, he told it way before. Then his word come right over and was made manifest. All the promised Messiah from the Garden of Eden 
The seed should bruise the serpent's head. So forth. Come to pass. God is in His Word. Now, God's in His universe. Say amen if you believe it. God is in His Word. You believe it? Say amen. Now, God in His Son. Now, God was in His Son. God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself. That's what the Scripture says. He, God, will come down and live in a body born to the Virgin Mary and God manifested Himself through Christ to show what His, His attributes was, to show that He loved, to show that His patience, to show His power, to show it to manifest Himself. God lived in Christ, reconciling the world to Himself. I spoke to a woman here some time ago, or she called my attention. She said, Pastor Branham, she said, I appreciate your sermons. I, I'm a... Attend your meetings, but she belonged to a certain denomination of church that does not believe that Jesus was divine. And she said, um, "Well, he wasn't divine." And I said, "Said you tried to make him too divine?" I said, "He was divine." Oh, she said, "Sir, I'll admit that he was a good man, and I don't want to hurt your feelings. Some of them people are my precious friends. It's Christian Science." And he said. Uh, he, he isn't divine, said, I'll admit he was a prophet, but he wasn't divine, and you try to make him divine. I said, he was either divine or the greatest deceiver the world ever had. That's right. I said, he was divine. He was more than a prophet. He was God over the prophets. Sure he was. I said, he was divine. And she said, now you said you was fundamental and you believe the scripture. I said, I do. And she said, if I'll prove to you by your own Bible that he wasn't divine, will you witness that I'm right? I said, yes, sir. If the Bible said he wasn't divine, then I believe the Bible. And I said, but I've got to see the scripture. She said, and John, uh, uh, over in St. John, it said, when Jesus went down to the grave of Lazarus, he wept. And said, you know, if he was divine, he could not weep. I said, Sister, is that where you base your thoughts? She said, Yes, sir. And that's true. He went to the grave of Lazarus. He wept. That showed that he wasn't divine. I said, Your argument is thinner than the broth made out of a shadow of a chicken to starve to death. I said, Well, you know better than that. And she said, Oh, he was. He was he's a prophet. He was a good man. I said, He was more than God was in him. He was a man, but he was a, a dual person. One, he was a man. The Spirit in him was God. I said, God was in Christ. She said, oh, no. I said, look, lady, I'll take your own scripture. He was a man, but he was a God-man. When he went down to the grave of Lazarus, he did weep like a man. That's true. But when he stood there, straightened his little stooped shoulders up and said, Lazarus, come forth. And a dead man had been dead four days come to life. That was more than a man. A man couldn't do that. That was God and His Son. He was a man when He come off the mountain hungry, looking for something to eat, looking around on a tree to find something to eat. He was a man when He was hungry, but when He took two fishes and five biscuits and fed 5,000, that was more than a man. That was God and His Son. He was a man when He was laying out there on that boat that night. Virtue had gone out of Him until He was so weak He couldn't... The waves didn't even wake him up, tossed about in that little old boat like a bottle stopper out there on a mighty sea. The 10,000 devils of the sea swore they had drowned him that night while he was asleep. He was a man when he was sleepy and tired. But when he put his foot up on the rail of the boat, looked up and said, Peace, be still. And the winds and the waves obeyed him. That was more than a man. God was in his son. Absolutely. He was a man when he died there on the cross screaming for mercy. He was a man when he died. He cried like a man. He had pain like a man. But on Easter morning when he broke the door, death held the seals of the grave and rose again. He's more than a man. He proved he was God. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. Someday he's coming. Oh, glorious day. God was in His Son. Reconciling the world to Himself. Do you believe that? Sure. God was in His Son. 
quickly or time gets away. One more thing. We, you believe God is in His universe? God is in His Word? God was in His Son? Now God in His people. All right. We'll see whether it comes down to human beings. The same as it does to nature. Human beings is part of His nature. Certainly they are. Now notice, God was in His people. Who was it the other night in our text? In Elijah, when a little baby had died of a sunstroke and been laid for hours and hours on the prophet's bed. When a man called Elijah... Walked back and forth up and down the floor and laid his body on that dead baby to come to life. That was God in his people. It certainly was. Who was it? That when St. Peter, the apostle, a fisherman, so ignorant, the Bible said he was ignorant and unlearned. Who was it when he walked down along the streets and people laid the sick in the shadow of that man and they were healed? Was it a man's shadow that healed him? It was God and His people that did the healing. Who was it in St. Paul when they took from his body handkerchiefs or aprons and laid on the sick? God was in His people. They recognized God in St. Paul. Certainly they did. Who was it when a bunch of little cowards prayed, took the Word of God and went up to Pentecost? They had the doors all barred up, the windows barred up, and they were in there for ten days. All of a sudden, there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the building where they were setting, and cloven tongues set on them like far and out into the streets they went where there was once a scared, went out there preaching the gospel and carrying on like a bunch of drunk people. What was it? God in His people. God moving among His people. God is in you. God, the Holy Spirit, is in you. Moving around now, reconciling the world to Himself. What makes these inspired ministers preach the gospel? What makes them perhaps one-time drunkards, one-time gamblers, one-time bad men? All of a sudden, something changed. Here yeah, they stand, preaching the gospel and giving their lives out. And some of them merely living just as poor as they can when they were businessmen. They could be rich. Ride in big cars and have luxury, but they sacrifice and give it away. Why? God's in His people reconciling the world to Himself. God's in His people. What is it strikes a little woman or a little man and he rises and his face lights up like a candle and speaks with a language he knows nothing about and another rise under the same kind of inspiration and give a message to his church. God in His people. Amen. What is it comes to this platform meeting after meeting and performs the same miracles that Jesus did when He was here on earth? It's God in His people. No matter how much it would be in me, it has to be in you too. Because it won't work just by me by myself. It takes you and I together to do it. That's right. All of us together, God in us all. God not only in Methodist or Baptist or Pentecost or Presbyterian, but God in every believer that's received the Holy Ghost. That's God the Holy Ghost in the people. Reconciling the world to Himself. Watch how He makes the people believe it. By the same things He did to the first ones at Pentecost, He does it to them today the same way. They receive the Holy Ghost in the same manner. Same signs and wonders follows Him. God's in His universe. You believe that? God's in His Word. You believe that? God's in His uh, Son. You believe that? God's in His people. You believe that? God moving in all. Therefore, Philip said, Show us the Father, and it will satisfy us. I'm satisfied today that I can see God everywhere I look. I don't only see Him, but I feel Him, and I know He's here. As the poet said, You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. I watch His Spirit and sit and motivate me, move me. You're motivated by something. The Holy Spirit. God is here today, friends. God is here. He's in His nature out down there. Summer and winter, leaves, flowers, birds, animals. He's in the sunset, the sunrise. He's in the solar system. He's everywhere. God is everywhere. He's in His universe. God is in His Word. Anybody will take His Word, any promise. Let me go on record by saying this. If you'll take the right mental attitude towards any divine promise of God, it'll bring it to pass. 
That's what I think about His Word. You take any promise in here and you take the right mental attitude towards it, God will bring it to pass for you. God is in His Word. God is in His Son. He was divine. He's the Son of God. I believe that with all that's in me, I believe it. Yes, sir. He was not. A more, he was a prophet, sure. He was a prophet. He was a preacher. He was a singer. He was, he was God. God manifested in the flesh. God come down in the flesh to reconcile the world to Himself. Then that wonderful Son of God died. And when He died, He gave His life. He rose again on Easter, and God raised up His body and set it on His right side and sent the Holy Spirit back to continue to manifest Himself among the people. And the same Spirit was in Jesus Christ is among us today, manifesting Himself continually to the people by the same signs, same wonders, given in the same Holy Ghost, speaking with the same kind of tongues, given the same kind of interpretation, seeing visions, moving out, healing the sick, just exactly like He did at the beginning. God is in His people. Why do we look there and show us the Father and it satisfies us? We see the Father. We see the Father. When I, when I look out here and see the sunset, I see the Father. When I see the sunrise, I see the Father. When I hear the wild call of the beast, I see the Father. When I see those flowers blooming, I see the Father. Don't you? I see Him in His Word. Every time I take His Word to a promise, I see the Father. I look at Jesus, I see the Father expressing Himself through the Son. I look at His people, I see the Father. See Him working among His people, expressing Himself, continuing on. Show me the Father. Here He is right here this afternoon, working among His people, in His people, through His people, over His people. Hallelujah! God is in His people. Let us pray. Praise be to God. Do you love Him? All right. I believe Billy told me. All right. Prayer card number one. Raise up your hand right quick so we can see now and get right quick to the prayer line. We're going to see something happen. Huh? Are you waiting for it? Amen. Prayer card number one. Who has it? This lady here, you have prayer card number one? I'm asking for prayer card number one. What, what letter was it? E. Prayer card E number one. Raise up your hand. Number two. All right. Number three. Number four. Come right over here, will you? Number five. Six, seven, that's right, raise right up, it's a call, stand up. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Just line up now. How many doesn't have a prayer card? Raise up your hands. Do you believe God's in His people? The same God that walked in Galilee in Jesus Christ, you believe He's here today in you? The same Spirit was in Jesus. He is the virgin-born Son of God, and you are adopted sons by Him. The same Spirit was in Him is in you. All right. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Let those come. We call them like that so we won't have a congestion, you know, of walking around so much. All right. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. That's right. Just move right down there and they'll stick you right in the line. If you can't move, uh, let somebody know. They'll pack you. Now, how many doesn't have a prayer card? Raise up your hand and say, I want God to heal me this afternoon. I don't care who you are, where you're from. Anything, just say, I want God to heal me. I believe. All right, 40 to 50 now. Let them come. Everybody with a prayer card, rise up and come over here now. You just got your prayer cards. We're just going to wait a few moments and start right out into the line to praying for the sick. Now, we are to be done in the next 10 or 15 minutes. So bear with us a little bit and pray with all that's in you. Now, I want you to look this away, each one of you now. Now, remember, is there any strangers here that's never been in one of the meetings before? There's quite a few. Just look. We're so happy to have you, trusting that you will, will continue on in this type of service. That is, where the Holy Spirit 
If you're not a, a member of some church that's full gospel and a nature, we would ask you if you love the type of service where the Holy Spirit comes in and moves. Look at these ministers here. They they live all through this country here. And they'll uh, thank you, sister. They'll uh, they'll be glad to have you in your church. Now I want to say this that every person that's been converted this week, every person that's been converted here this week, now look at this bunch of ministers. They they stand for the same thing that I do. We haven't one difference at all. We're absolutely the same. We believe in the full gospel, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, all these things, all these ministers here. We are all just exactly the same. And we want you to join their church so you can continue on. Now, they are the, the good Samaritan has come by, poured oil in the womb. But he's tucked you now. He wants you to go to one of the inns here, the closest to you. He's done paid the pastor to take care of you. So he's paid. He received the Holy Ghost, got blessings of God and health and revelation. He can just feed your soul. So you come now and join one of the churches. And it'll, it'll be the best thing that you can do to keep your spirit fed and moving on. God be with you. Now, we do not claim to be anything more than your brother. Now, if the rapture come today and God would take those worthy ones home first, I'd be the last one to leave the platform. That's right. I was born out of season. I, when you, a lot of you Pentecostal ministers here, older than I, years ago was out here on the street preaching when the persecution was hard. You were paving the way that I'm running over. You were telling the people that these things would happen. You had to cut through all kinds of bushes and things, over all kinds of rock piles. See, I'm just a baby. And you're the ones, you're the brother who's, who's brought this. You're the brothers and sisters that done these things. You only spoke it to the people and told them that it would come. You laid the foundation. One is a, lays the foundation, the other is a carpenter, one's a plumber, one's an electrician. The house of God is being erected. See? And now, as we go on and each one has his place. And now we we want you people to honor and respect our brethren and these churches. And let the kingdom of God grow and increase constantly is our prayer. Now, I cannot heal. Healing is already purchased by the Holy Spirit. How many knows that? Christ did it on Calvary. The only thing that maybe these men here, they're ministers. They could take the word of God. And I wouldn't, I'd be daring to stand before them with the word of God and anything contrary. Because they're called, that's their office. They preach. They know what they're talking about. So I just listen to what they say and say, Amen, go on. Because they're, they're a man of God. I follow them and I find they're in the Bible and tell the truth. Well, now, I'm not much to preach. But my gift is a gift of seeing. That's a, Jesus was a preacher. He also was a seer. And on my part, being I have not education enough to preach... But I have a gift to foresee things. Tells forth and foretells. For in the Bible it says there was set out apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors. All these for the perfecting of the church. God set them in the church. Now there's nine spiritual gifts that we can lay on hands and so forth and pray earnestly for the best gifts and so forth like that. But these others are predestinated gifts of God. God sets them in the church. Through the age that's coming. He, John the Baptist was a special runner for that age. God just foreordained him to do that work. Do you believe that? Sure he did. Jesus said, did you go to see a prophet? He said, more than a prophet. See? John didn't know that, but Jesus knew it. And Jeremiah, before he was born, God said, I knew you sanctified you and ordained you a prophet to the nations. That is true, isn't it? Now, when Jesus is here on earth, he said, when he went to leave, he said, a little while and the world, don't forget this, Christian friend. A little while and the world won't see me no more. Yet you shall see me, for I'll be with you, in you, even to the end of the world. Did he say that? He'd be with us to the end of the world. 
The Bible said it. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means the same in principle, the same in power. The only thing different in Jesus today on earth than he was then, today he's here in the form of the Holy Ghost. His corporal body sits at the right hand of God in heaven. Someday he will come and those that are in Christ will rise and go with him. That's what we're looking for that day. But his spirit with all of its power and manifestation is given to the body of believers throughout the world. Now, this angel of the Lord, if it doesn't perform and do the same works that Jesus did, then it's not the spirit was on Jesus. But if it does the same works that Jesus does, because he said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he also. You know the Bible says, same chapter, John 14. The works that I do shall he do also. Even more than this shall he do, for I go to my Father. I know the King James puts it greater. There could be no greater. The original says more. Because he stopped nature. He raised the dead. Well, just everything. You could do no greater than he did. But the church would do more of it because while we're having a meeting here, they're having a meeting in Africa, they're having them in Brazil, they're all around the world, see? Because it could be more. God was manifested in one person then, His Son, Jesus. Now He's manifested in His church universal. But the same Spirit doing the same works. One day to you that hasn't got a prayer card. Now is there one more prayer card in the, in the audience? If there is, you must get in the line. You without prayer cards. There was a woman, let's say, let's say it like this, it doesn't read this way. But a woman one time had a blood issue and she didn't know how she was going to get to Jesus. But she said, if I can touch the bar of his garment, I believe him, I'll be healed. How many ever read that story? Why, sure we did. And now she slipped through the crowd and she slipped past all the critics and she touched his garment. Now the Palestinian garment hung free and they had an underneath garment. Now he didn't feel it physically. But he said, who touched me? When she touched him and went back out in the audience. Who touched me? And while Peter rebuked him, said, Lord, why would you say a thing like that? Why everybody's touching you. And sayest thou who touched me? He rebuked him, the Bible said. He said, but I perceived that I got weak. Virtue went out of me. And he looked all around over the audience till he found the little woman. And he said to her, thy faith has saved thee. She had a blood issue. You remember that? Now, it, how many watch these clergymen here? All of you are pastors. Pastor, brothers, the Bible said that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. Is that right? And the Bible says that he's a high priest. Sitting at the right hand of God now. Making intercessions on our profession. He's a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Is that right? See that? A high priest. Now, if he's the same yesterday and forever, the same kind of touch would bring the same results. Is that right? Now, you look to him. How would you touch him? With your faith. Reach up and say, Lord Jesus, I have a desperate need. Listen, ask this. Don't pray for yourself. Pray for somebody else. Let's take it that way. Not like yourself. Pray for somebody else. May the Holy Spirit see to that. Just pray for somebody else. Some of your loved ones or somebody that you know is somewhere or something like that. Pray for that. See, it's, you'll know, don't have, they don't have to be here. God hears prayer. He knows what you're praying about. How many in the building strangers to me and I know nothing about you? Raise your hand. Thank you, I guess, every person. Down this prayer line, every one of you. Know, you know what, I'm a stranger for you. Raise your hand. I don't know you. Now you realize, if one touch from a little woman made Jesus Christ, the Son of God, weak, virtue went out of him, virtue strength. What would that line do to me, a sinner saved by grace? See, there's your interpretation. More than this shall you do. See, there you go. Now, if I should take half of that prayer line on discernment, it'd probably pack me out. It just weakens me. There's something about it. I can't do all that, but I can pray for each one. That's what you want anyhow, isn't it, folks? Lay hands on. Now, Jesus... He didn't say, lay hands on and pray. He said, these signs shall follow them and be, if they lay hands on the sick. He never said, pray for them. Just lay hands on them. The order of praying is call the elders of the church, let them anoint them and all and pray over them. That's for the church. But the evangelistic gift of healing is just lay hands on the sick. We know that. Not pray for them, lay hands on them. These signs shall follow. Now, 
But that the, let's see, who is uh, Brother Borders? Who, all right. Just so the Holy Spirit gets started moving among us. Now look, I don't want anyone to move around. Please not ever hurt. Be real quiet. Be reverent. Now I mean when the Holy Spirit does anything, you want to praise Him. That's right, you should do that. But don't move around. Set quiet because each one of you is a spirit. And then the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes and say, somebody back over behind there saying, I wonder if that's right. I feel that right here. Somebody way back there said, say, John, do you know so and so and so and so? I was so and so. See, that interferes. See, because if the great spirit of eternal life is with us and it's got me anointed for something, then I'll feel it. It's like a heartbeat. See, you, that's how I, I find it. See, you touch him. And through that, when you pray to Him, your favor and faith touches Him. Then He just, I just surrender myself. Then He speaks over and begins to tell me. Then you be the judge whether it's right or not. Now, if He will do this for the last time now we're leaving, fixing the meetings, fixing the close in the next few minutes, how many will say, I will accept it with all my heart and believe for whatever I have need of? God bless you. Heavenly Father, into Thy hands I commit this audience. I take every spirit here under my control for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. I ask it in His name. Amen. Now the lady here, I believe, just held up her hand that she is a total stranger to me. I do not know her. Perhaps our first time we've ever been this close together unless we pass somewhere on the street somewhere. But God knows us both. Now, if, uh, now watch, friends. Here is a picture today of St. John 4. A woman and a man meeting for the first time. Jesus and the woman of Samaria. Now, I'm not Jesus. Neither is she the woman of Samaria. But it's another age. His same spirit is here. The woman standing here. She might be a critic. She might be a Christian. She might be an imposter. She might be needing finance. She might be standing for somebody else. I don't know. I just couldn't tell you. But God does know. Now, if he will stand and tell me and let her be the judge. If he'll tell me exactly something about her, if, I, if there's anything about her, I wouldn't know it. But if he'll tell me something about her, let her be the judge. Then whether, if it's right, you know it'll have to come from some kind of a power. Is that right? Some, well, then how would you class that power? Is preaching the gospel, exhorting Jesus Christ, calling sinners to the altar, healing the sick and afflicted. What kind of a spirit, what kind of fruits would that spirit be bearing? The same kind of a spirit fruits that Jesus Christ bore with the Spirit of God on him. Is that right? It would be a Christian spirit. Of course, it would be up to you to make your choice which one. But it would be God to you, wouldn't it? Yes. Because she is a Christian. Now, how do I know she was a Christian? Because I feel her spirit. See? Just now, just like a heartbeat coming in like a... And I know the Spirit of God that's up on me that's anointing me now Recognize it that that's my sister. And I've never seen her, yet I know she is. See? It's just like something coming like this. It's going together. Her spirit is blending with the spirit that has me anointed. How many have seen the picture of that angel of the Lord that got oh we've got him here everywhere? They're all over the world. Remember, I tell you this. That angel of the Lord that you see on the picture, the pillar of fire that led the children of Israel that was made flesh and dwelt among us, come from God and went to God, returns back in the last days to perform its work, finish up the kingdom, is right here within a six inches of where I'm standing. I remember that. What a challenge. But I believe him. He knows. I know that he never failed. Now if the Lord will reveal to me something about you, sister... And you in the prayer line now, you just be ready because I don't want to stop for discernment on it all because I couldn't do it. But you just be ready. Be believing. Now, if I could help you and would not do it, then I would be uh, evil. I shouldn't be standing here at this pulpit. That kind of a person. Certainly not. But I've been preaching hard. And I'm waiting just a moment to carry a conversation with you just like our Lord did to the woman at the well. He said, bring me a drink. See, what was he doing? Catching her spirit. See what, what was the matter. Then when he found her trouble, he told her what her trouble was. You remember what it was? She had five husbands. And six it was. Of course, she had five and the one she's living with then made six husbands. And 
And when he told her what her trouble was, why she said, Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. See, the, the, the Pharisees had just said he was a fortune teller, a devil. He told them that would be forgiven then, but when the Holy Ghost come to do it, it never be forgiven. It's be forgiven. So, but she said, I perceive that you're a prophet. We know, we Samaritans, we know the word. We know when the Messiah cometh, who's called Christ, he'll tell us all these things. See, she knew that that was a sign of the Messiah. And he said, I'm he that speaks to you. And she left the water pot and ran into the city and said, come see a man who's told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the Messiah? Now, if that was a sign of the Messiah then, it would be the sign of Messiah now. If Messiah is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If this spirit that you're conscious is something's going on, aren't you? Now, just let the audience know, a real sweet, humble thing has just been is on you. Isn't that right? Uh, raise your hand. Real sweet, humble. I'm watching the light between me and the woman. Now it's breaking away. The woman suffers with TB. Right. And she's just come from a tubercular hospital. That's true. That's right. There's somebody else. It's this boy here. It's not the same spirit on him. Well, that's your grandson. Yes, it is. That's right. He's got sinus trouble. And he's also got scarred tissue on his lungs. That is true. That is, that is that's right, true. isn't it? That's right, it is. The doctor said he did have. Sir? All right. Miss Harris, that's your name. That's my name. You and your grandson go home. Your troubles are over. Oh, thank God. Oh, you believe the Lord Jesus Christ? See, that's the Bible. That's God's Spirit. Doing the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, do you believe with all your heart? That should set it. Now, if I don't say one word, just lay my hands on you while the anointing sure will you believe? Go then, be healed. Come, sister. You want to get over your stomach trouble? Just go thanking God and say, it's over. Believe with all your heart. If I lay my hands on you, you believe God will heal you? In the name of Jesus, be healed. That's the attitude to come in. He was healed. That's right. That's the attitude. Now remember, the Holy Spirit is here. Here comes a lovely little boy. You're too little, honey, hardly to have faith. But look here just a minute, Brother Brandon. All right? Your heart trouble's over now. You can go home and be well. Amen. <laughs> Jesus bless you. Let's say thank the Lord for that little boy. Been awful nervous, haven't you? Go to leave you now. Just go right on home saying thank you, Lord, and be well. Come. Well, that old diabetes, if we could just get rid of it, we believe with all of our heart, in the name of Jesus, may it leave the woman and never bother her again. Amen. Come. Now. This lady had the same thing, diabetes also. Believe with all your heart now when you pass by. And be made well in the name of the Lord Jesus. You believe everybody now? Have faith in God. Come, my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, be made well. Have faith. Don't doubt. Come, brother dear. I actually believe you was here when you were sitting right down there. So you just want to go back on God bless you now. All right. Come, sister dear. Have faith in God. That's it. That's it. In Jesus Christ's name, be made well. Amen. God bless you, sister. Go right on rejoicing and believing. Oh, that's the attitude to come in. Now, be real reverent. Everyone keep your seats now. Be real reverent. The Holy Spirit's here. Just because it don't talk a whole lot to them, sometimes it says things I'm just trying to say. If I see it appear right quick, I say it and then go on. See, sometimes I can snap out of it again for a few minutes and then go on. But the Holy Spirit's here. He still knows all things. You believe that, lady? Come here a minute. I'm sure you've been Spanish and me, uh, Irish. We don't know one another. This is our first time meeting. You believe Jesus Christ? Is the one that I speak of is the true Son of God? You believe I represent Him right? You believe He sent me to help you? If I'll tell you what your trouble is, will you believe Him? Your trouble's in your back. You got back trouble. Also, your husband has back trouble. He has trouble with his leg. You got a girl who's got trouble with the neck. It was caused from an automobile accident. That's right. Go home, you all. Have faith. Don't doubt. Now that weakens and does something. Just have faith now, please. Come now. Come, sir. 
Don't doubt. Now, you've been awful nervous and shook up, made you have a peptic ulcer in your stomach and hurting you, but go home now. It'll go get well. God bless you. Have faith now. Leave with all your heart. Well, we can see what's the matter with the little baby. It's a, got his braces on here. You go to believe for it, sister, now? Yes, that God's going to let that little girl live and raise up, be a young, fine woman without these braces? Dear Heavenly Father, if I could heal this child and take these braces from it, I would do it. But I lay my hand upon this darling little baby who has not no way of having faith for itself. I condemn this crippled condition. In the name of Jesus Christ, may this baby walk and live. Amen. Just as certain as the sand here. Yes, you believe it, don't you? How many believe it? She'll go and the baby will take the braces off and will walk. All right, have faith. Nervous, stomach, you know, all my. You believe? Go right on, eat, and have a good night. Enjoy your face, may you all. Have faith now, everybody. Have faith in God. Come, sister dear. You believe with all your heart? Oh, Lord, I pray that you'll heal her. She must have your healing power or die. And I pray that you'll heal her. All right, sister. Let me show you something. There's lots of people out in this audience suffering with the same thing you are. Let me show you something. you got a nervous heart. Let me show you out there. All that's bothered with nerves, raise up your hands and heart. Raise your hands. Look down. See, how can I call each one of them? See, I couldn't do it, but I just feel that great pack. The enemy trying to hold you and calling out there for mercy. He's going to lose his hold everywhere. So, so. You believe he, lo- he lost it on you just now? You feel different, don't you? He was healed just then. Come, young lady. Be with all your heart. Be made well. In the name of Jesus, may our sister be with us. God bless this little boy. Oh, my. You believe Jesus will make you whole? All right. In Jesus' name. God bless you, sister. All right. Come now and believe. Come, my brother and usher. Come, you. Get the blessings of the Lord. I lay my hands upon my brother in Jesus' name. All right. Jesus' name. Everybody believing? Have faith. Don't doubt. Just believe now. Just because we don't stop with every person, that doesn't mean it's tell. I see it, but I just don't want the vision to... There's something like connects in you when you speak to the people. You know what I mean? It connects and then you're... That's it, see? You're... Makes you weep. Just a moment. Something happened in the audience. If you'll believe, you'll never have to have that bladder operation. You touched the border of his garment, sister. (laughs) What did she touch? Tell me what she touched. She said, possible for her to touch me from there. But she did just... Now, let me tell you something. She was sitting right there then praying, God, let him call me. Is that right? If that's your prayer, there it is, see? That's exactly it. You do the same and see if it isn't so. Just do the same. All right? We're strangers to each other. I don't know you and, and you don't know me. God knows us both. While the anointing's here, we just see what the trouble is. The first thing, you're bothered with your eyes, your head. You got a knot on your left arm and wrist. That's right. You believe? You're from a place called Sunnyvale. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mrs. White. Yes. Go home and rejoice. Me and be All right. Have faith in God. Just believe now. Everyone, come on now. Be. Are you believing? Everybody pray. Oh, just keep. Before God pray, you come, brother. In Jesus' name, be made well. Come, sister dear. Come believing with all that's in you. Oh, Lord, in Jesus' name, heal my sister. Amen. Come, sister dear. Believe just what God is doing, His presence. You're passing under the cross now. In the name of Jesus, may she be healed. Come, sister, passing under the cross, believing with all your heart, the back trouble will leave and you can go home and be well. All right. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, sister dear. Oh, Lord, I pray that she passes that you will heal her. Amen. Come, sister. Believe our ministers pray. Everybody pray. In Jesus' name, may she be healed. Come now, believe with all your heart. Poor sister. She's very bad. You believe God knows what's wrong with you? You believe He can tell me? Then the female trouble ceases. Go home. Be well. Come believe me. All right, sister dear, come on. You believe with all your heart? You think you got healed a while ago when we prayed for them and had heart trouble out there? 
You do? Go right on. Do <laughs> Let's say praise the Lord. Everybody have faith in God. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? No wonder he was called Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Pray for your loved ones. Just pray not for yourself, for your loved ones, just a moment. Pray for someone. Lady, you believe? You believe God can tell me what you're standing there for? I see you got a... Oh, you're one of the workers? I don't know you. I, I guess I've never seen you no more out there in the audience. Is that right? So the audience will know. That's right. You believe Christ can reveal to me what your trouble is? And if he does, then that bitch is wearing that tag. Some person might be in here and say, well, sure, she's a worker. He knows. I've never met you in my life. I don't know. That. But if I tell you where your trouble is and something, you know it has to be something besides me do it. Is that right? You're not here for yourself. You're here for your son. That's right. And he has something wrong with his muscles. It's a kind of a decaying of the muscles. It caused him to go into conditions. His eyes go cross and everything. Real nervous. His name's Donald. Go home and bleed. Let him get well. Take that hand. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. We come, sister. Come, believe Now let's pray. Everyone, be in prayer. Come, sister. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may my sister be healed. Amen. Come now, sister. Amen. That's right. Come, my Lord. Oh, Lord, as she passes under the cross of Christ, may the blood touch her body. Amen. Come, my dear sister. Bleed for the little ones. And Lord, as they pass under the cross, I lay my hands up on them and ask for their healing in Jesus' name. Come, my brother. Pass under the cross, believing with all your heart. You can have what you ask for. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you he be healed. Amen. Come, brother, likewise, go right under the cross, believing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, my sister, have faith in God. Don't doubt. Believe. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask your request to be granted. Amen. Pray, brother, and everyone pray. Everyone pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, may my sister be made well. Come, sister, in the name of Jesus Christ, may she be made well. Amen. Um, ever who that is praying, some man out there, keep praying. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Have faith in God. Come, sister. Believe now with all your heart. In the name of Jesus, may you be made well. Come, my brother. You believe? Great, big, strong man, but yet with stomach trouble. Believe with all your heart and go home and be well. In the name of the Lord. You believe, little sister? All right, come near. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may her request be granted. Believe, my brother, with all that's in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may your request be granted. Don't doubt you want to see Come. God bless you. Thank you, sir. That's all right, is it? You believe with all your heart? God bless you. Jesus' name may be made well. Come, sister. Is this the end of the prayer cards? All the prayer cards up? How do you do? You believe me to be his servant? You, do. you believe then he can tell me all about all your trouble? All right. Now, I believe you just said you just got out of the hospital. One of the things that's wrong with you, you have a crippled hip, trouble in your hip. But your hospital experience was for a female operation that hasn't healed up yet. That's right. That's right. And your name's Miss Potts. You go home and be well, Miss Potts. Do you believe with all your heart? Have faith. That man sitting right back there is the one I keep seeing. He's prayed. He's got a white shirt on open at the collar. Praying for his friend sitting over from him there with a mental condition. Do you believe, sir? Raise up to your feet and accept and lay your hands over on your friend there. There you are. God bless you. Go home and be well, son. Jesus Christ makes you well. Hallelujah. He was praying for his friend. That's what does it. Jesus Christ, God's Son, does these things, makes you well. You believe that? 
Here's a woman sitting right here, a little white thing across her head, sitting right next to a girl who's got a blue looking something in her hair. The woman's praying for her husband. That's right. He had cancer and you're afraid it's coming back on him again. That's right, isn't it? All right. You believe? Stand up on your feet and accept it. In the name of Jesus Christ, may it leave you. Pray for somebody. Pray for a friend. Pray for somebody. Here, way back there, I see a man sitting back behind this woman here, quite a ways back sitting in. The second one sitting in there. He's praying for his wife. She has a nervous breakdown. You believe, sir? All right, stand up on your feet and accept the healing. And believe with all your heart. Go home and find her getting well. God bless you, my dear brother. Believe with all that's in you. Anybody else believe? Have faith in God. Here. A little little girl raised her hand right here. There's the light hanging over. Or she's a... Here's a little... There's two of them. The little lady raised her hand. The little lady sitting next to her seems like the light's hanging over the little lady with the blue looking dress on. You're praying for someone. A nephew. Got heart trouble. Nervous. That's right, isn't it? He isn't here. He's in Los Angeles. That's your sister. The reason it's so close contact. She's praying too. But it's for a friend. She's praying for the conversion of this friend. This friend's a Catholic and she's praying for him. That's right. You're both sisters. That's true. Stand up on your feet. God bless you. I don't know you've never seen him alive. There's something strange about you though. You've either been somewhere or, or know somebody from somewhere where I've been. I see a strange looking place. It isn't, it isn't even... It's Germany. Are you German? That's right. You are. That's exactly right. All right, your faith is give you your request. Go home. You find it the way you believed it. Hallelujah. I challenge you in the name of Jesus Christ to believe it to be true. I challenge. How is your sinner here would like to come here and stand before we go any farther with the healing line? Sinner friend, you that's backslid, would you like to know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior? Come here just a minute while the organ plays us a nice little altar call. Come here. The Holy Spirit knows who you are. If you have need of Christ right now in your life, will you come down just at this time and stand here at the altar? This will be the last time I may ever get to pray with you in all the days of our life. This is your opportunity. God bless you, young fellow. Will you come someone else? This man coming here, someone else. Come right on down behind the screen there. And come right on to the altar now while we're waiting just a moment. We're going to wait. Come right here, sir, and stand right here. Someone else, like, come stand by and move out. Come right on up now and stand here so we can pray for you. I'll be glad. I'll be very glad to pray with you. Just come. That's all we ask you to do. God bless you, sir. Stand right here. Is there another... There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins where sinners plunge beneath the flood lose all their guilty stain. Is God in His universe? God in His Word? God in His Son? Now, is God in His people? Well, God is right here then. He wants to come in you. Won't you come? There is a fountain filled with blood Come right now, you that have a need of Christ. We don't care what church you belong to or what one you go to or what one you will go. Come, that's right. Move right up around the altar now. You that hasn't got the Holy Ghost, would you want to come? Come right on now while we're singing. Come on. And sinners plunge beneath the flood. Lose all. God bless you, sweetheart. I got a little Sarah home at your age. See that, mommy? Lose all their guilt. Thank God bless you, sister. Are you convinced that Christ is in these people? Come forward now, won't you? Move right out. Come this way. And sinners 
that there's no bloody hands on the day of the judgment waving to me and saying, you should have held a little longer. I ask and invite every person that's without Christ, without hope, without the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I invite you here to this altar. Come and receive him now. But if you do not, then I will not be responsible at the day of the judgment. See to it now, while Christ is in our midst. We're aware of that. God's in His universe. You see Him out there. God's in His Word. You see Him here. God's in His Son. You see Him at the cross. God's in His people. You see it here moving, working. It's here. Now let's come. While we sing one more time, there is a fountain filled with blood. Won't you come? There is a fountain. Don, fill with blood. Here's the fountain. Here's the cross. Won't you come? And sinners plunge beneath that blood. Lose all their guilty stains. God bless you. Oh, their guilt he stands blue. All oh, their guilt he stains, and sinners plunge beneath that flood. Blue. Just keep coming. That's right. Keep moving. We'll keep waiting. We got plenty of time to wait for penitent people to come to the altar. Come right on. We're glad, happy, thankful to God that you're coming. Move right up now in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Him who is omnipresent, omnipotent, infinite. Will you come now to Him? Why His grace is flowing sufficiently to save all, to give you everything that you have need of. He's sure to give you the Holy Spirit, save your life, heal you of any disease, do anything for you that you desire. The Lord bless. Now, while the audience is praying quietly, I'm going to speak to the ones that's here. Friends, something told you to come to this altar. It was the same one that knows your heart, the same one that speaks your, the Holy Spirit, God. God is the Holy Spirit in His people reconciling the world to Himself. Now, He's come to reconcile you to Himself. Blessed are you. Blessed is the eyes who is open to see the kingdom of God. There has been many thousands of your peoples before you. Hundreds and hundreds of your grandparents that long to see these days. Many great men before us, many great men before you 
longed to see the time when the Holy Spirit would come into the church and do what you've seen done this afternoon. They died in the faith, believing that someday their children would see it. Now, you have seen it this afternoon. You've heard the word. You know it's the truth. And God has opened your eyes. There are prayers. Here's little girls standing here, a mother standing holding two little girls. Little things come up weeping. I wonder if a child, children, don't sometimes condemn the adult from their tender little heart. They haven't pulled it through all kinds of disappointments of the world and things. It's tender and sweet. I'm watching these two little girls hugged up against the lady, just like it was looking for something to happen. Sure, God speaks to his little children. The Bible said so. Suffer little children to come to me, forbid them not. I see a little mother here holding her baby, a sweet little baby, holding it in her arms. She's come here now to be reconciled to Christ. Now, blessed are you. No man can come to me. A young man holding uh, his young wife, I suppose, standing there holding her. She's weeping. He's got his head bowed in reverence. Do you know that's the works of the Holy Spirit? Others. A little brown-eyed girl looking at me, about seven or eight years old. Little brown eyes and brown hair. Her little face is all lit up. She's expecting something. She may be Spanish. I see a lovely young woman just at the crossroads of life with her head bowed, reverence, her arms folded. I see others, gray hairs, their heads bowed down. This is a sacred moment. Remember, friends, we're just never come up here just to be coming. We've come because God called you. You're the trophies of this meeting this afternoon. Frankly, you're the trophies of the grace of Jesus Christ. That He's called you to be reconciled and to come to receive Him this afternoon. God be with you. Blessed are they, see, that do hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be filled. You find that in the Beatitudes. Jesus said so. Young man standing here. Just young man, maybe 18, 20 years old, maybe coming preachers. How do I know? Maybe from there I'll go a missionary that'll light the world. Maybe out of them young men will come gifts that'll swing thousands of souls to Christ. And you were present the day that when they come to the altar. What a wonderful time. Let us bow our heads now while I offer prayer. No man can come to me, said Jesus, except my Father draws him first. And all that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Lord, here they are. They have come because you have bid them to come. The Holy Spirit in their heart has moved and called them. And they come. Here they stand at the altar, penitent, bowed heads, wanting to be filled with your spirit, of your goodness. Fill them, Lord. Sanctify their lives. Send them into the harvest fields. These people standing here waiting. It may be just at home. It may be across the sea. It may be somewhere. But there's a harvest ready to be reaped. Lord, I pray that you'll sanctify their souls and fill them with the Spirit until they'll be chosen vessels of yours. Maybe the little housewife, the harvest, the neighbors... Maybe the little child to speak of Jesus to a little girl in school. Maybe the young man to pack the gospel to Mexico, some other foreign country somewhere. Grant it, Lord. The age to speak on the street corner to his comrade. Maybe somewhere else, the factory man to his boss or to those that are in the factory. Thou knowest, Lord. I pray that you'll fill them just now with your goodness and mercy. They've come. I know you've received them because you said, He that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. He that will confess me before man, him will I confess before my Father and the holy angels. Therefore, they are here standing publicly to make a confession. They were wrong. They want to be right. You receive them, Father. I pray that you bless them and make them your children from this hour henceforth. Through Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you. Each one of you receive you the Holy Ghost. I go right into the room where we can meet you back here. Lay hands upon each of you to pray. Right back here. Move right back. There's a room provided back here where you'll be just in a few moments back there for the the fully filling. Kneel down. Thank God for saving you. Be hands laid on you. 
back there for your need and for the Holy Ghost. God bless you. Bless this little mother. All of them going along packing their little babies and the dad stroking the hair of his little baby, knowing that he too knows that someday he can tell his little one, we sit in that meeting where they come to the Lord Jesus. In the sweet by and by. There's a land that is fair and day, and by faith we can see. Oh!